Plants vs. Zombies and its sequels have spanned over a decade of continuous development, with the cast of Plants being drastically changed and altered over time to meet the demands of new games and updates. Often, analyzing how Plants have changed over time really puts into perspective just how much the franchise has changed in its over 15 year run. Today we'll be looking at... I don't like Chomper. Okay, okay, put down your pitchforks for a second, hear me out. There's really not much point using the chomper. You might as well dig it back up instead of waiting four business days for its mouth to open again. That doesn't mean me and chomper are on good terms, far from it actually. You might as well use all that lawn space for better plants. Yeah, I've put this off for long enough. It's about time I bite the bullet, or should I say bite the zombie, and have a crack at the history of none other than Chompy Boy himself. It's no secret that I have some uh, strong reservations about this plant, but I'm going to try my best to put all of that aside just for this video. Despite evolving significantly over the years, Chomper has always been an iconic yet polarizing plant that struggled to find its place. This is largely because he's been absolutely neglected and mistreated by PopCap over the years. In this video, we're going to find out how, so strap in because we're going back to where it all started in 2009. Let's sink our teeth into the history of Chomper. Chomper gnawed its way into Plants vs Zombies 1, being unlocked after level 1-7. Costing 150 sun, Chomper was a unique plant to say the least. Chomper worked by instantly killing a zombie within one-ish tiles in front of it. However, it could only chomp one zombie at a time, and had to chew for a lengthy 42 seconds before eating another. Nothing good comes without a price, and considering Chomper's fairly cheap sun cost and fast seed packet recharge, its digestion time was clearly the hefty price you had to pay to use the plant. While chewing, the Chomper would become a sitting duck, left completely vulnerable to any forthcoming zombies. Chomper also couldn't insta-kill a few zombies, including jumping pole vaulters, jumping dolphin riders, balloon zombies, digger zombies behind it, and gargantuas. This didn't impact its effectiveness in the early worlds too much, since the biggest threats here are only introduced towards the end of the game. By the time Chomper was introduced, the player would have unlocked permanent attackers like Pea Shooter and single-use plants like Cherry Bomb, but Chomper offered something new by combining both of these mechanics into one plant. It truly was a one of its kind, the only non-single-use close-range attacker in the entire game. Well, apart from maybe Gloom Shroom, which is basically a post-game plant anyway. On top of its appealing visuals, this made Chomper one of the more iconic Plants vs Zombies characters. Apart from Pea Shooter and Sunflower, Chomper is probably the most well well-known plant in the franchise. This is supported by the fact that Chomper is one of the only plants on a title screen, and one of only four character classes to be ported to Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. In an adventure mode playthrough, Chomper was pretty bad. Obviously you would get the most value out of it by using it on tankier zombies such as Buckethead and Football Zombies, but this made its effectiveness fluctuate largely between levels. Chomper would see a lot more favorable opposition in the night stage rather than the fog stage for example, since the former introduces the football and screen door zombies while the latter introduces the digger and balloon zombies. It was also made a lot better in combination with wall plants like walnut since its range actually extended far enough to chomp zombies that were eating the plant in front of it. Using this combo would also stall zombies while the chomper was chewing, helping to ease the plant's biggest burden. If you used chomper as a tool to remove tanky zombies in levels where they were specifically problematic, you could get some value out of it. But if you used it as just a standard attacker like pea shooter, you were basically just shooting yourself in the foot. This is one of my major gripes with this plant, it's just poorly designed. When the only way to get value out of a plant is to use it as essentially an insta-kill when it was designed to be a long-term attacker, you know that something's not right with its implementation. And it's not even a good insta-kill at that, being outclassed by other cheaper instants like Squash and Potato Mine, not to mention Cherry Bomb which has the same cost, but can blow up a whole group of zombies. Its usage as a normal attacker was just as abysmal, being severely outclassed by other day stage plants like Snow Pea and Repeater. Chomper's awkward functionality reminds me of Peanut from Plants vs Zombies 2. It can be used in multiple ways, but it's crap at all of them. Things didn't look any better for Chomper in the survival modes either. With an emphasis on playing the long game and defending from increasingly large waves of zombies, Chomper became overwhelmed very quickly. When you have hundreds of zombies swarming onto your lawn, and it takes your Chomper's 42 seconds to kill each one, 
It's just not viable at all. Especially for survival endless, it's best to just forget this plant exists entirely after the early game. This is a problem that will come back to haunt Chomper later on too. However, there were two more niche aspects of the game that Chomper fared a lot better in. These were the versus mode and speedrunning. In the versus mode, Chomper's effectiveness was massively inflated by changes to the environment around it. The football zombie and, to a lesser extent, the buckethead zombie were both considerable threats in this mode. These zombies were made even more dangerous by a reduction in sun cost from iZombie. Obviously, Chomper loved this because it hard counted both of these zombies. The screen door, Zomboni, and ladder zombies were all countered by Chomper too. The fact that the Dolphin Rider, Balloon, and Snorkeler zombies were unavailable here further cemented Chomper's place in the versus mode meta. This is not to mention that the Digger and Pole Vaulter zombies had increased prices compared to iZombie and were fairly niche picks too. The only point where Chomper struggled was the early game, where many zombie strategies revolved around rushing and spamming smaller units like brown coats. But in the middle and late games, the demand for instant zombie removal tools was undeniable, and the fact that one of the only other alternatives, Squash, had its sun cost increased in this mode only further solidified Chomper's benefits. Was Chomper overpowered here? No. Was it one of the best plants? Also no. But was it a good plant? I'd say so. Speedrunning was the other area that Chomper excelled at in this game. Wave progression was triggered early if you had dealt enough damage to zombies in the current wave, so the key to Plants vs Zombies speedrunning was to deal as much damage as possible in as little time as possible. But this couldn't be done solely relying on instants like Cherry Bomb, since they had very long seed reload times. Normal attackers were also ineffective on their own due to their significantly lower DPS. This is where Chomper comes in. Chomper had by far the fastest seed reload time of any insta-kill plant. So by building up a lot of sunflowers in the early game, speedrunners would accumulate enough sun to spam chompers as if they were single-use insta-kills. By targeting tankier zombies like Bucketheads, waves could be triggered very quickly due to the amount of damage being done, accelerating progression through each level. Luckily for Chomper, it eventually did find its place in Plants vs Zombies 1, even if that place was very unconventional. However, things would take a major turn for the worse in Plants vs Zombies 2. At launch, the second game featured many fan favorite plants from the first game, including Pea Shooter, Sunflower, and Cherry Bomb. In fact, every single plant from the day stage of the original game returned to the sequel, except Chomper. Clearly, such beloved plants as Spike Rock and Tall Nut were deserving of their places in the sequel. You know, it's not like Chomper was on the title screen in the merch on the box art, or used to market drinks in little TV ads. No, no, clearly bringing back Split Pea was a higher priority. Jokes aside though, this would start a long and painful trend of Chomper being neglected by the developers in the coming years. A whole year would pass with two new worlds being added to the game, Far Future and Dark Ages. These worlds would bring back even more plants from the first game, including Blue Clover, Starfruit, and five whole mushrooms. Yet still no sign of Chomper. There was no doubt that Chomper would be added to the game eventually. The question was when, not if. And in October of 2014, this trailer would be dropped. Big Wave Beach Part 1 was announced with Chomper starring front and center. In fact, Chomper was the only plant to be revealed in the trailer. A testament to the anticipation and hype of its return that had been building for over an entire year. Three days after the trailer dropped, Chomper would be added to the game, a whole week before the Big Wave Beach world was. You may be thinking, how could Chomper be released before the world it was a part of? Well, Chomper wasn't actually part of Big Wave Beach. Controversially, it was another premium plant added to the game's shop. It happened at Torchwood, Snow Pea, Starfruit, and Hypnoshroom among others, and now it was Chomper's turn. These were just some of the plants from the first game that would return to the sequel behind a paywall. As you can imagine, this did not go down well with the player base. Even more so since Chomper was more iconic and popular than any of those other premium plants combined. Anyway, as for the plant itself, it appeared basically identically to its Plants vs Zombies 1 counterpart. The only difference here was that its chewing time was reduced from 42 seconds to 30 seconds. However, this didn't really mean anything since it basically just synced Chomper up to the much faster pace of the second game. It was more a quality of life patch to appropriate Chomper to the speedier mobile game format than an actual balance change. Just like every other plant, Chomper also received a plant food ability. This would make Chomper insta-kill the first three zombies in the lane, then burp to push all the other zombies back. This ability was just kinda meh. At least it looked kind of funny, I'll give it that. Chomper's power in this game at launch was also very reflective of the first game. Chomper did not receive a warming welcome, instead being bombarded by a myriad of zombies that it couldn't eat, including, but not limited to, 
the Imp Cannon, Piano Zombie, Zombie Bull, nearly all of the mechs in Far Future, the Zombie King, and the Fisherman Zombie. Just like the first game, its usefulness varied massively from world to world. Chomper fared a lot better in Ancient Egypt than Far Future, for example, since Ancient Egypt was relatively free of zombies that threatened it, while Far Future was so evil to it that you'd be better off running onto the lawn and beating up the zombies yourself. All of this is not to mention the significant increase in gargantuas in this game. With gargantuas becoming something you actually had to account for on a regular basis, picking Chomper became a lot less appealing. Another point of contention for Chomper was the overall increase of zombie counts and frequencies in levels. This made using him to pick off tanky zombies a lot harder, because they'd be diluted by a bunch of other zombies all flooding our defenses at once. For these reasons, Plants vs Zombies 2 was just not the place for single target plants like Chomper, heavily favoring plants with splash damage or piercing damage. In January of the following year, Frostbite Caves Parts 1 and 2 would be added to the game, bringing with it a few unfavorable matchups for Chomper, including the Troglobite Zombie and Hunter Zombie. To add insult to injury, both of this world's tied in premiums costed gems instead of money, leaving Chomper hanging as the last world-related money premium plant for the foreseeable future. Lost City Parts 1 and 2 would come out in the later half of 2015, neither introducing zombies that were particularly threatening to Chompa. You might think this means that things started looking up for the plant, but the exact opposite is true. This time the problem wasn't in the zombies, but in the plants. Lost City Part 2 would introduce the first world promoted money premium plant since Chompa came out over 8 months prior. Ironically, this new plant was basically just Chomper 2.0. Enter Toadstool. Functionally, Toadstool was a Chomper that had 2.5 tiles of range and costed 50 more sun, but produced 50 sun every time it finished chewing a zombie. So, you may be wondering, why would anyone choose to buy Chomper instead of Toadstool? And I don't have a rebuttal for that, because you're right. It's honestly baffling how absolutely mistreated Chomper was in this game. They waited until the 6th world to add him into the game, and when they finally did, they made him cost money before releasing an objectively better replacement just months later that you could buy for the same price. Yeah, if you thought Chomper was a waste of money before this update, you'd have no idea afterwards. Unless you were a masochist or a diehard Chomper fan, there was genuinely zero reason at all to spend your real world money on this plant. Unfortunately, the rest of 2015 was just as brutal for Chomper. While the addition of Neon Mixtape Tour also wasn't as rough for him in the zombie department, the return of Cactus as a premium plant was yet another slap in the face for Chomper. But unlike Toadstool, this wasn't about Chomper becoming more obsolete, it was solely about the principle. Starting with Cactus, the devs would be a lot more attentive to balancing when bringing back Plants vs Zombies 1 plants. Both Chomper and Cactus were undoubtedly subpar plants in the first game, but the devs only decided to rework and buff Cactus with its return to the second game. Cactus was given piercing damage and a close range mechanic, which worked really well in appropriating it for the new zombie climate in Plants vs Zombies 2, while Chomper was just Control c Control v would straight into the game and left to fend for itself. In fact, it seems like Chomper was just treated as a test experiment in these regards, because ever since its release, basically all of the returning Plants vs Zombies 1 plants were reworked or balanced in a major way. Well, except for Garlic, but who cares about Garlic? Garlic's whole identity revolves around being pathetic, so reworking Garlic wouldn't be faithful to the original plant at all. If you thought Chomper couldn't possibly be neglected in any more ways, think again. Because in this same year, a handful of Plants vs Zombies 1 money premium plants would be briefly featured in the shop for gems. Plants like Squash, Imitator, Torchwood, and... not Chomper. Honestly, you can't even make this shit up at this point. If I were Chomper, I would just turn around and start fighting for the zombies because clearly he was not appreciated on the plant side. Maybe Crazy Dave has a personal vendetta against this plant, just like I do. The end of the year would bring a glimmer of hope for Chomper since, over November and December, Jurassic Marsh was rolled out and it was one of the most friendly worlds for Chomper, if not the most. Apart from the obligatory Gargantua, all of the new zombies could be swallowed by Chomper. This world wasn't all sunshines and rainbows though, because the new plants it introduced were extremely overpowered. If Toadstool wasn't the final nail in the coffin for Chomper, then the radically inflated standard for a good plant definitely was. Why would you buy a borderline useless plant like Chomper, when game-breakingly OP plants like Primal Potato Mine and Primal Sunflower were introduced completely free of cost? And don't even get me started on the new premium plants added with this world. Grapeshot and Cold Snapdragon were twice as powerful versions of existing plants that were already twice as powerful as Chomper themselves. 
By this point, Chomper was more like a decoration in a shop rather than a plant you'd actually consider buying. It's like PopCap were keeping it in the shop to make all of the other premium plants look more appealing. For lack of a better Gen Alpha term, Chomper got completely mogged by all the other premiums. But 2016 would finally bring new horizons for Chomper. Nah, I'm just joking, this year was pretty uneventful. Modern Day was rolled out in January and February, but didn't really mean much for Chomper at all. Even though the new zombies in this world had generally favorable matchups for Chomper, this was cancelled out by the fact that he'd often get bent over by the zombies from old worlds anyway. Chomper was left as an afterthought as the rest of the year carried on, as had become customary of the game at this point. But would you believe it if I said Chomper got denied by the devs yet again? With the shift from classic to modern Plants vs Zombies 2, a huge opportunity would arise for Chomper. In March of 2017, a select few premium plants would be made into gemium plants, but this time it was permanent instead of temporary. The majority of the plants chosen were, understandably, Plants vs Zombies 1 plants that hadn't been balanced enough when ported over, like Hypnoshroom and Squash. You may be thinking, wow, those are the perfect conditions for Chomper to be chosen, right? Well, do I even need to say what happened to this point? I'll say it anyway. Yeah, Chomper got blue balled for the millionth time. I don't even have any adjectives left to describe how unjust and confusing PopCap's mistreatment of this plant was throughout the game's history. Maybe Chomper was just so popular as a character that it was selling enough for them to not bother buffing it or making it a gemium. That's genuinely the only reason I can come up with. The rest of 2017 and the whole of 2018 and 19 would pass with, yet again, nothing being done about the plant. By mid-2020, the game around Chomper had completely changed, leaving Chomper behind as a dusty old relic of the past. With the arena mode, Penny's Pursuit mode, and a whole bunch of ridiculously OP CDMs, it was more obvious than ever that Chomper was an outdated, borderline useless plant that hadn't seen the light of day in a whole decade. The power creep over these years was excruciating, with CDMs like Pokera making Chomper completely obsolete as a close range attacker. And that's not really surprising for Poker in particular since it's so unfair that it basically makes every plant obsolete, no matter their function. While not being anywhere near as strong as Poker, Snappy provided direct competition to Chomper as a zombie-eating plant, much like Toadstool did five years prior. In August of 2020, it seemed like PopCap finally realized that Chomper was in dire need of changes. So what did they do about it? They reduced its price from 5 USD to 1 USD. Sure, reducing its price by 80% is pretty significant, but here's my problem with this change. Imagine someone tries to sell you a bag of dog sh for 5 bucks, then they lower the price to 1 dollar. It's still a bag of dog sh Luckily though, it seems like this didn't work as much as PodCat were hoping, because in August of 2021, literally one day short of an exact year after its price reduction, they would have another crack at fixing Chomper. And this time, they actually made a decent change. In this update, they reworked a few other plants in desperate need of buffs too, including Snow Pea and Electric Current. Yes, for the first time in seven painful years, Chomper wasn't left out of an outdated plants being saved balance patch. But calling this saved is a little generous because this update didn't do anything of the sort. Chomper had its chewing time reduced from 30 seconds to 17 and could now eat two zombies before needing to chew instead of one. Yes, this buff basically doubled Chomper's power, but here's my problem with this change. Imagine someone tries to sell you a bag of dog in 2014. Then over the next seven years, the demand for dog halves. Then in 2021, they offer to sell you two bags of dog A, it's still dog and B, the two bags of dog is just as valuable as one bag of dog was in 2014. This buff was way too late to actually improve Chomper in any meaningful way. In my opinion, Chomper should have been given this buff immediately on arrival in 2014, just to bring it up to speed with a significant increase of intensity compared to Plants vs Zombies 1. But giving this buff to Chomper in 2021 just felt like too little too late. With all the exponential power creep and chaotic new game modes that we've discussed in modern Plants vs Zombies 2, this buff basically just lifted Chomper from F tier to D tier. This is especially insulting for Chomper since other buffs to veteran plants like Snoopy and Torchwood completely revitalized them and made them actually viable again for the first time in years. But even though Chomper finally got PopCap's attention, that attention was far from undivided. It's also important to note that the buffs to Snoopy and Torchwood didn't focus on increasing their raw power, but instead gave them new features that allowed them to thrive against a faster pace and higher zombie counts compared to the first game where they were designed. Snoopy was given Splash and a chance to free zombies. Torchwood was given extra health, some damage to zombies biting it, 
and lane-wide death damage. These changes actually address the fact that these plants weren't outdated due to a lack of power, but instead because of the changes in game design between Plants vs Zombies 1 and Plants vs Zombies 2. For Chomper, its buff just doubled its raw power in a game where its power wasn't appreciated in the first place. The general consensus on Chomper post buff floats between bad and just okay. I personally lean towards bad, but maybe I'm just too harsh on it. Either way, the years since this buff haven't really affected Chomper too much. Recently, the power creep in new plants has started to slow down though, which at least means Chomper isn't becoming outdated as rapidly as it was pre-2022. But PopCap just couldn't help themselves and had to neglect this plant one final time. Unlike Plants vs Zombies 2, Chomper was actually chosen to be included in Plants vs Zombies 3 at launch. But in an almost comedic twist of fate, that version of Plants vs Zombies 3 got cancelled and taken down. Then in 2021, they released a new version of the game that was completely rehauled. And can you guess who they left out? Popcap actually caring about Chomper was just too good to be true. However, all wasn't lost for the plant because the April 2022 soft launch of the game included a preview video of upcoming content, which actually showed Chomper in game. And that brings us to the present day. Chomper's still nowhere to be found. To add a bucket of salt to the wound, they did eventually add Lychee to the game, which was the only other new plant featured in that preview video. At this point, you can't help but feel sorry for the guy, and even I'm saying that as a certified Chomper hater. From being left out of games at launch, to constantly being denied buffs and reworks, to just being underpowered in general, it really just does seem like Chomper's been hung out to dry throughout the course of the franchise. Recently, it was announced that Plants vs Zombies 3 is being taken down yet again, so who knows how long we'll have to wait to see what the next step for Chomper will look like. Will Chomper be treated just as poorly as it has been over the past 10 years? Or will it finally get the treatment it deserves as one of Plants vs Zombies most iconic and pioneering characters?